And joining us today, Jane Velez Mitchell, editor of JaneUnchained.com. She's also a New York Times bestselling author, also attorney and political strategist Chelsea Henry. Thank you both for being with us. All right, Thanks guys. Thanks for having us. So the candidates have made their wish list for the debate format moving forward. 30 seconds or more for opening statements and closings, questions parity and integrity, not so-called lightning rounds, no so-called lightning rounds is what they're saying. They also, uh, you can see the, uh, some of the... Yeah, 30 second opening and right. closing statement. Also, this is something else that they want to get in there too. They want to remove the RNC from the debate negotiating process, the approval of graphics displayed during the screen ahead of time. Uh, that was a little trouble for Jeb. And they also want to receive information about the rules and criteria at least 30 days before the debate. Now, Jane, let's ask you first, are the candidates whining too much about their debates or yes. are these concerns justified? No, this boo hoo hoo hoo. I mean, my gosh, these are people who are vying for the toughest job in the world. They would have to negotiate with Putin. They would have to deal with ISIS. But oh, they're such victims because they were asked unfair questions at a debate. Are you kidding me? This is unseemly. It makes them look like a bunch of losers, frankly, and childish. I mean, if you compare the Republican dialogue, the Republican debate with the discourse at the Democratic debate, it was far more high-minded and talking about issues and ideas. I feel that this is absolutely very self-destructive on the part of these Republican candidates. They need to grow up. Well, I think something, that, you know, with the Democrats, they had fewer people on stage, less people on stage. And I think that's kind of the biggest problem right now. But Chelsea, we just talked about the money Carson and Cruz were able to raise off of these debates. Also, the ratings have been off the charts. And that's partly uh, helping Ben Carson because not a lot of people knew who he was before these debates. Um, do you think fewer people are going to watch these debates if they take a more subdued approach to the line of questioning? I don't think that there's going to be a major decrease in the viewer, uh, the people who view the debates because you have people out there who are just curious, who want to see what's going on in the GOP as we have these 14 people who are contending to get the nomination. And so, you know, the campaigns sat down, they, you know, they had their concerns and that's their right. They could do that. I, uh, Applause Chairman Priebus because he's continued to stay at the forefront and saying, hey, we have this under control. We saw, we've heard you, and we'll continue to work together. So, you know, people can debate whether there were unfair questions, fair questions, but at the end of the day, we have to continue to get back to what are the policies that are being discussed in these debates when you have millions of people who are watching who and who are ultimately going to use what they see on the debate as part of their decision on who they're going to vote for. So we're at a great place. We are continuing to move Forward, despite everything that you see forth in the media over the past few days, yeah, some people have raised money, but most importantly, the Republicans in terms of the candidates as well as the RNC, they're moving forward, and that's what matters most. Okay, with this full time we have remaining, I'm going to bring up another point. Morning Joe host and former GOP representative Joe Scarborough brought up an interesting point today. Take a listen to what he had to say. 90% of the people that have moderated these debates over the past 50 years have never voted in a Republican primary. And as a Republican, after a while, you get sick and tired of it. All right, so he says the liberal executives who run the mainstream media won't hire Republicans to host their nightly news and their Sunday shows and makes it all but impossible to find conservative moderators for the GOP debates. Jane, I want to start with you. Does he have a point? No, I don't think he does. I mean, look, Megyn Kelly, I don't think, is a liberal Democrat, and she got into it with Donald Trump over his descriptions of women, and it was perfectly appropriate. In fact, it was appropriate for the uh, much controversy, the controversial question of uh, were you running a comic book candidacy to be asked of Donald Trump because he is running a comic book candidacy. And he's at, asked at it again. He just attacked the DNC chairwoman as being a terrible person and being neurotic and being crazy. If you're going to engage in name calling, you, you deserve to be called out on that. And you deserve to be asked whether you're running a comic book candidacy. So last last of eight seconds to you, Chelsea. You know, yes, she can say that it's a comic book or however she wants to describe it, but let's not forget just a few weeks ago, the Democrats were referring to the Republicans as enemies. So there's been name callings on both sides. Again, with not, these yeah, debates, the we have to get back to the Chelsea. issues. I'm sorry, Chelsea, getting a little ahead of myself. Hillary Clinton was doing that. It's more like, it's kind of like a codependent relationship, I think. We're going to come back. we got more to talk about with our roundtable with Chelsea and Jane. We're going to talk about Obamacare. Plan costs are rising, and not many people are signing up this year. 
Is this going to be the year Obamacare finally collapses? One senator thinks so. Plus, Jeb says he can fix it, but will his new messaging fix his actual campaign? Or is it too late for that? We're going to talk about that with Dick Morris right after this. And we welcome you back for part two of our roundtable. Rejoining us, Jane Velez Mitchell, editor of JaneUnchained.com, also New York Times bestselling author, right. and attorney and political strategist Chelsea Henry. Thanks for sticking around, ladies. Okay, so the numbers are out, and Americans are finding out that Obamacare mm. premiums are actually becoming less affordable. It kind of defeats the whole purpose, right, of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, according to Politico, the most popular plan, the Silver Plan, will rise about 13%. That is about four times the increase for plans this past year, with enrollment falling and prices rising. Top Senate Republican John Barrasso predicts this to be just the beginning to the end of Obamacare. In a Washington Times op-ed, he wrote this, unless something dramatic happens, this may be the year of the health care laws collapse. Chelsea, let's start with you. Do you. What do these new numbers in your mind tell us? Is, does the senator have a point? Yes, the senator has a point, and this is something that conservatives, well, really people on both sides, because not everyone agreed with this, with Obamacare and how it was implemented. Obviously, there are parts of Obamacare that have uh, have some value to society, but in terms of what we're seeing, I'm not surprised. Um, I think that it's great that now Americans are seeing what happens when you have government intrusion into your lives. You have these 18 to 34 year olds who just decide to take the penalty. I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. And so what now needs to happen from our leaders in D.C. is as we're seeing this, especially as Republicans are calling out the flaws in this bill is to in this act is to say, what are going to be our next steps if Obamacare collapses? What are we going to do? Because there are health care needs of people across this country that needs to be taken care of. And I just hope that it doesn't continue to be a Medicaid expansion, which we've seen with 9 million of the people that signed up in 2004 out of the 9.25 million. So there's clearly issues that are only growing, that are only getting bigger. You know, I write for Ebony and I share with my Ebony audience how it was affecting HBCUs. Mm -hmm. This is an issue and we need solutions. And Jane, is there a solution out there? Or are they just going to tweak Obamacare? Or are they going to actually try to repeal it? There is a solution. Obamacare is flawed because it doesn't look at the big picture. Why are Americans so sick? They are sick with largely preventable diseases. Uh, heart disease, America's number one killer, preventable with proper diet, obesity, diabetes. And guess who is promoting the unhealthy diets that are making Americans so sick and causing health care costs to skyrocket? The U.S. government in the yeah. form of the USDA that pushes unhealthy food on American school children and American people. So what you have is a lopsided equation. Oh, what are we going to do once everybody gets sick? Well, let's give them extens expensive operations to fix their, fix their clogged arteries when we could have prevented them from getting sick in the first place. That's why Obamacare is deeply flawed. And it's really because of the moral bankruptcy of our entire system where the U.S. SDA is essentially run by industries that are promoting unhealthy food and pushing it on the American public. So what it, we have to do is totally dismantle all of it and start from scratch. Yeah, and it will be very disappointing too, Jane, be, you know, for Republicans too. They've tried so many times to repeal Obamacare without a real alternative in place. And if it does fail and there is nothing to swoop in and help these people who need their insurance, it will be a huge uh, missed opportunity for Republicans, as Chelsea indicated. Another administration fail, according to the Inspector General's report, is the U.S. spent nearly $43 million, your dollars, our tax dollars, on a gas station in Afghanistan. It was originally only supposed to cost $500,000. John Sopko, Special Inspector General for Afghanistan Construction, said the audit released today, quote, one of the most troubling aspects of this project is that the DOD claims that it is unable to provide an explanation for the high cost, even considering security costs associated with the construction. Doesn't this just tell us that when it comes to things like government funded gas stations in Afghanistan, we just can't do it right, Chelsea. 
when I read the stories about this, you know, I was just completely flabbergasted to know that it cost 140 times more than what they had projected. As you said, John, you know, everybody at the DOD seems to just have completely, you know, forgotten everything dealing with this project. But the misfortune is for us as taxpayers. I mean, we have spent millions of dollars over there for what? For what? We don't exactly. even know, you know, for what the task force that was assembled, you know, now it was disassembled in March 2015. Well, where are the documents from that. Right. What I want to really give Jane happened? a chance to weigh in on this as well. As we get ready to ramp up our military operations in right. Syria and Iraq again, this is a case study in what can go wrong if we're not paying attention. Jane, last 30 seconds well, to you. I'm not shocked at all because we hear stories about $100 million screwdrivers and toilets. You know, it was a conservative Republican, Dwight Eisenhower, who warned, coined the phrase military industrial complex and warned about an ever growing bureaucracy that is self perpetuating and increasing un unaccountable. And that's what we're seeing here. And that's why we can't attack people when they question military budgets and call them unpatriotic. We've got to make everybody accountable, including the U.S. military. Yep. And unless we do that, we're going to see more waste and more corruption. And we'll have to leave it there, ladies. Jane Velez Mitchell and Chelsea Henry, thank you so much for joining us here on Newsmax Now. Great to have you. Just ahead, Bernie Sanders releases his first television ad. Will it get voters to feel the burn, or did he just burn $10 million for nothing? Political analyst Dick Morris joins us next.